artists, it's Gina. Welcome to art class. So glad you're back to draw and paint with me again. Maisie, our dog here, is really missing all of the artists coming to our art studio, so she wanted to say hi. She is doing really well, but she misses all of you. So we can't wait until we can get back to drawing and painting together, but until then, we're gonna be painting virtually. <laughs> so today we're going to be um, drawing and painting a peacock. It's going to give us an opportunity to do lots of different kinds of patterns. Mike will demonstrate one pattern and I will demonstrate another pattern, but if you, um, and you could choose which one you would like to do. It also um, gives you an opportunity to choose any kind of colors. So it will be a bright painting that will be unique to everyone. So cool. I'm excited. All right. So you ready? Let's do this. All right. Okay, we are gonna start with the head of the peacock. Now the peacock head is an oval shape, kind of like an egg. It's not huge, but it's not tiny either. But we're gonna put it kind of in the center of the page. I'm using a pencil since we're gonna be tracing with a, um, with a pen. And so I'm using a, a lighter pencil. I have the, the egg kind of at an angle. It's not, um, straight across and it's not up and down, it's kind of at an angle here. Then we're gonna draw the beak. The beak is like a sideways V shape, but it kind of has a little, peacock beaks have a little bit of a um, curve at the very tip of their beak. So I'm making that curve down there, almost like a little te um, teardrop or a little dew drop. And then we need to put the second line in the beak so that the beak has two sections, a bottom part to the beak and a top part to the beak. We are gonna add the little black spot that they have. We're just gonna do um, an oval shape and we'll fill it in with our Sharpie. We're gonna draw the eye. So we're gonna start with the upper eyelid, which is just like a, a roundy hill, like if you were going in a car, like you're going up and then down. It's a nice wavy hill, gentle hill. And then you're gonna do the bottom. Very nice, Mike, that looks awesome. All right, we're going to put a eyeball and a little white sparkly, which can kind of overlap that black section. Now we need to start to make the head. I usually like to start at the top of the head and then I'm gonna come down, create the neck, and then the body. I'm going to kind of erase this part because it got a little bumpy. Make it smooth. Like that. And then I'm gonna come from here and also make the neck and then come out and make the body already looking like a peacock very cool so you do two sides the back side but start up by the head and go down to the bottom of the page and then the other one will be down underneath by the neck by the beak and come down to the bottom of the page now we can erase this original circle that gave us good information but now we don't need it Peacocks also have a white section that starts by the ear, the eye, I mean, and comes down to the beak, just like that. It's kind of like an oval section. Always relate things to where they are. This one starts at the end of the eye and comes and wraps around to the beak. 
and this starts underneath the eye and wraps up to the beak. So I always kind of relate things where they are to other things that are already drawn. So now those are gonna be the two white patches on our peacock. We are going to create M's on the body. We're gonna start with the bottom row. It's just like an M going all the way across. Then you're going to come up and you're going to draw on top, but the second row is going to end, like the M is gonna go and leap over to that other M. So we're not gonna go down into the valley. We're gonna go up over to that other top, like we're doing leapfrog and landing on these rocks. Because we don't want it to land underneath the, the valley. So they're going to be landing on the tops of the other M. So we started with an M shape. We're going to do a second row. And Mike already has his third row, so we're going to do another row. Like little leapfrogs. And then you're going to keep going almost like to write about if you want to draw the top here like smaller m's the top to know where you're going to stop you can draw one row at the very top i know i'm going to stop right there and then i just have to fill this whole body in with m's so i have my whole body Now you were going to put little petals on the side. They're actually feathers, but they're like the shape of a leaf. You can make them smaller. You can make them bigger to smaller as they get up. Like little um, diamond or leaf shapes. And you're going to do it on one side and then you're going to do it on the other. If you need to turn your paper like this in order to do them sideways, you can do that. So you have them on both sides, these little leaf shapes. Oh, those are awesome, Mike, I love them. <clears throat> those are great. Here's Mike's are a little bigger than mine, but I'm gonna hold them up because they're awesome. They look great. Cool. And then the peacock, we're just doing like a little portion of the back feathers, but we're just going to do, we're not going to do a, a pattern for all of it. We're just going to do the outside of it and then paint it a nice green color. We need a place for our eyes to kind of rest. It doesn't need to be super busy. Peacocks have these little things on top of their head. Again, I'm drawing an animal that I don't know a lot of the <laughs> features or um, names for their parts, but I do know that they're like little circles and then I'm just drawing lines down to their head. So I might not know what it's called, but I know that what they sort of look like. And all I did is little ovals, like little eggs, and then lines heading down to the head. You can make them taller. I think I made these a little bit taller than from the head than I did these. Every peacock's different, right? Yeah, every peacock's different. Love those. Now this is when you can start to um, have some fun with the, with the feathers. So if you want, um, and I have two demonstrations here, but I want whatever you choose, I want you to stay with the whole thing. So the only reason why there's two different patterns is because I was demonstrating that you could do this you side talk, or you could do about this the side. Versus yes. The eyes like, over here? Huh? Yes, yeah, the hearts versus the eyes. So I don't want you to really mix it up. I guess you could do every other something, but otherwise I want them to be fairly similar all the way across. So the hearts are just drawing a heart. And then, well, first I'll show you that. So a heart and then an inside heart and then a heart just the top of a heart now you can do different sizes so you could do 
some bigger ones, some medium size, some smaller ones like I did here. And you can just start to add them. So I could draw a smaller one here. I'm gonna show you what to do, Mike, just one second. And then I'll draw the smaller one. So just start to add them throughout your paper if you're gonna do hearts. If you wanna do more like the shape of the peacock feathers, they're kind of like big teardrop kind of circles like that, like a big teardrop. So you could also place that anywhere. You can place them on the left side or the right side. And then you're gonna draw another teardrop shape on the inside of that. And another circle. And kind of like an eye with another little curved line mm. on the bottom of it. There's going to be a light blue and then a dark blue. And you can draw different sizes of those shapes. So you can have smaller ones, bigger ones, whatever sizes you want. I'm going to do hearts and Mike is going to do the, the eyes mm -hmm. of the feathers. Wonderful. So you can have hearts throughout your paper, or you could have eyes throughout your paper like Mike's. It makes it much more interesting if they're different sizes. So I love that he has some smaller ones, some larger ones, some medium sized ones. Excellent. Now we're going to draw a line and we're going to draw I'm just going to start on one arms. side. Yeah, kind of like arms. Just drawing some of these little lines coming from one side, sort of bending a little. As you can see, it's forming around my heart. Yours is probably going around your eye a little. Then you can do the other side, kind of forming around your heart or your eye. And so that's how that first one with the line looks. Then I'm going to draw another line coming down and going, starting on the right side and going and wrapping around and wrapping the other side. Like that. And it's okay if they overlap a little and bit. And it's, what, yes, it is okay if they overlap. I have several that overlap. So when you get to a line where it's going to touch, you can go over it. Mine aren't touching. It's okay if they don't overlap. Each will be different. When you get down, if you're kind of close, you might just do a couple like that because it's really close to the body. Next thing you're going to do is get a Sharpie. That looks excellent. And we're going to start to trace. So we're going to start with the eye. Now their eyes are really black. So this is what it looks like with one thin, ultra fine Sharpie. But if you can get it really thick, like go over it a couple of times, almost like they have black eyeliner on. They are really thick eyeliner eyes. Next, you're going to do the little white sparkly and then the eyeball. And we're going to fill in except for the white sparkly. We are going to draw the beak, which is just tracing our lines. You're going to fill in that black spot on the beak. You're also going to trace your white lines that are not going to be painted. And you're pretty much just going to trace all of your lines. Everything else is just tracing a line. If you go over it, that's okay. We can erase. Like if you don't go over it exactly, that's all right. Try and stay on your lines as best you can, but we can always erase at the end before we paint if you don't stay within your lines.
So just go over all of your lines, all of your pencil lines to get us ready to, to paint. So we're going to start with our medium sized brush and we're going to paint the body of the peacock. So there's the dark blue or just blue. We're going to have a lighter blue, green, and then back to blue. So you're going to use your blue. If you have a praying set, just use your regular blue. I'm using cobalt blue, kind of a deeper blue. And then in the next section in our mixing tray, we're going to mix that blue with white. We're going to get a beautiful white, lighter blue. So just mix the white until you're happy hmm. with the color. And I have a nice light blue. Do you see my light blue? Oh, it's looking kind of gray. Your white might be a little dirty. Yeah, it's so this That's is the light blue that you should be able to get. I think, I think, you, I think you have more experience with this than I do. <laughs> just clean That's, your, yes. just take the paper towel and clean your white a little. Okay. Just get it wet, the paper towel wet. Okay, so we're going to start with our dark blue or our blue, and we're going to paint the bottom third of the peacock body. Again, does not have to be perfect, so if you go a little higher, that's okay. Then we're going to switch to the lighter blue while it's still wet, and you're going to paint the upper section, the next two thirds, with the lighter blue. This is going to be um, all the way to where the feathers end. It's going to be blue, the lighter blue. Then we're going to switch to a green, any green that you have on your palette. You're going to paint that while it's wet as well, next to it. Don't paint over the blue, just right next to it. and the blue again, the regular blue. And you're gonna paint around that white. Don't paint inside where it's white, just right up to it. If the darker blue doesn't look, like if your two blues look kind of the same, you can just go over your bottom blue again, make it a little darker. But like I always say, it's okay to make mistakes, yes? Yes, we can always fix mistakes. And that blue down the middle. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to take red or pink. You could do red or pink. We're going to paint these little circles on the top of the peacock's head with the red. We don't need much red, do we? We're not going to use no, it for anything else? No, no, that's it. Can you do that with a medium brush? Mm, I did. I just used the tip. Just did the brush on the tip. Yeah, good job. Now these little leaf shape feathers on the outside of the body, I used yellow. So any yellow that you have, and I still am using the bigger brush, but I'm using the tip of it. So I'm painting inside my lines. If you want to switch to a smaller brush, you can. So all of them are yellow. Now I'm going to demonstrate two different. So I'm going to first start with the hearts. If you're doing the hearts, I just used an orange and painted an orange on the outside heart between the outside heart and the middle heart. So just that first layer. You, again, could choose any color you want. You don't have to copy my color. But if you want to copy my color, these are the colors I used. So I just started with the orange and I filled each one, just the outside heart. So go around to all of them. If you have the pattern that you want to do like a real peacock, you're gonna fill your outside one with green. Hmm. 
And then while you have the orange, so there I filled in all my outside heart with whatever color you want. While we're waiting for that to dry, you could paint your beak orange. We're gonna kind of switch colors. So you're gonna move on to orange. You can paint your beak orange, and I'm gonna move on to the light blue. So mine I'm gonna paint, these are the colors I chose. Again, you could choose any colors you want, but I'm gonna do green for the inside of my heart. Now make sure all of your orange is dry before you move on to the green, or that your green is dry before you move on to the orange. So you're gonna paint this section all orange. Mm -hmm. There are actually a lot of circles in the eyes of the peacock, so if you wanted to look at a real peacock photograph and kind of study and see what colors you see and then choose um, those colors for your eyes of your peacock, that would be okay. A great idea. So we're going to paint the back feather portion on the body of the um, peacock. So I'm making a light green. Again, you can make any color you want. I'm mixing green with yellow to make a light green. So just put your green into your mixing tray and then add some yellow to it. And you could add some water if you feel like it doesn't, it, like it's too dry, doesn't have enough liquid to paint, and then once you're happy with your color, we're coloring this part. So we're gonna go around those yellow feathers. Smaller brush, Smaller you can definitely brush. do that. So Mike just said that he isn't comfortable, well, he's comfortable painting with a medium brush around the bigger areas, but then when he has to go around the feathers, he wants to get a smaller brush. You can definitely do that. I like to put my brush up on the tip and kind of paint around that yellow with the tip of my brush. I feel like I have lots of control. I also still can have lots of paint on my medium-sized brush. So, but whatever you're comfortable with. But try not to paint into those feathers. Just paint around them. next step is painting the inside of my heart. I'm going to do that with the blue that I used for the peacock. So I'm just going to fill, you can use a small brush to kind of get into that little line inside that heart shape, just like that. And then if you have the pattern like Mike, you're going to mix the blue and white together to make a light blue. and you're gonna paint a light blue on the bottom of your oval and the darker blue on the top part. Or again, you could use any colors that you want. So if you wanna use a smaller brush. Definitely. <laughs> so you start with the lighter blue on the bottom. There might be more of a gray blue. That's all right. It's okay if they bleed together a little bit. It is. I mean, ideally, you'd want them to dry, but I think it looks nice if they yeah. are soft. Nice. Good job. Okay, we're going to do the background. You can choose any color you'd like for the background. You can mm. go with pink. You can go with purple. I didn't choose green or blue because there's already a lot of green and blue. I also didn't choose orange because there's a lot of orange. Um, so, but other than those three colors, green, blue, or orange, you could choose any other color. So if you want um, purple or brown or pink, there's um, a couple other different colors. You could choose a different kind of green if you wanted to go dark, dark, dark green. But just don't choose any of the colors that we have on our palette. So the colors I chose was a lighter purple just the purple I have in my palette. And then I mixed that purple with a blue to get a darker purple. But you could do pink and purple. 
or you could do a light purple, light pink and a dark pink, but mix up two different colors and start with one this is called wet into wet so i'm going to start down here on the bottom of the page go around the eyes or hearts of my peacock and around the body and while you can switch from one color to another so you can after you've painted one color for a while just go right into another color and kind of let it bleed together. I think that always looks really pretty. And Mike is just finishing with his reddish, orangey color. It's more red, kind of pink. And that looks beautiful. I love how different they both look, depending on what colors you choose for your background. I love it. I love your choice of colors. Right. That looks great. Thank you. Then we just need to sign our name. And thanks for painting with us. Good job. Thank you. That was fun.